pizzas here, you can consider it a side channel. A side channel is some kind of signal coming from a well, black box, your target, the thing you're investigating, and it tells you something about what's going on on the inside. They found out that huge international disputes usually caused a big pizza spike. And, um, well, this has been anecdotally called the pizza attack on, uh, on, the, on the Pentagon. On a more serious note, a um, couple of side channel attacks, examples from the recent times. Uh, you may have heard of Wij vertrouwen stem computers niet. I'm not going to try to pronounce that in English. Um, basically, what they were able to do is to sniff off the air um, the votes that were cast on a certain uh, voting, electronic voting machine. And they just did this using the signals that the machine naturally produced. And, well, it's a nice tempest scanner. And they showed that you can differentiate between votes on the CDA, which is a political party, or other parties. So another example of a side channel. Even more recently, um, there was a couple of guys at Kansas West this year that showed that using a laser pointed at a laptop case, and then looking at the reflections coming back, the vibrations from the laptop actually um, they related to the keys that were being typed. And if you look at a laptop long enough and the vibration of the screen long enough, you can actually deduce what somebody's been typing. So the, the vibrating screen of a laptop, I'm just going to check mine, actually discloses what you've been typing. So that's all very cool. Um, well, I've already been introduced much more... Uh, ambitiously than I was going to do myself. Um, I live in Amsterdam. I work for a lab called Riscure. We do um, all kinds of security testing, mostly on hardware, so like smart cards and embedded uh, um, systems. Personally, I've been doing a lot of software reverse engineering. I'm a computer scientist. I'm not a hardware guy, sorry. Um, but I've picked up quite a bit over the last few years there, so don't worry too much. Um, and before this, I used to work for a pen testing company called IQSX. Okay, so a little overview about this talk uh, itself. So we're going to be looking at side channel analysis. And two major components there are passive analysis, which means that we're not going to interfere with the target. We're just going to look at what signals it's giving us. And we're going to be looking at active attacks. So we're going to try to influence the device by sending it in weird signals like glitches on the voltage line, uh, sending in laser beams, all that kind of cool stuff. Um, the targets I'm going to be talking mostly about is going to be smart cards. These attacks were mainly invented on smart cards. Um, if the term DPA doesn't mean, means anything to you, differential power analysis was invented about 10 years ago. And it was a huge blow to the smart card industry at that point in time, because some guys um, um, from CRI, a company in the, in the US, they showed that they could, at that point, pretty much break any smart card. Um, nowadays, it's not so easy anymore. But I'll show you at least the basics um, on how this works. Interestingly enough, um, smart cards is a bit of a different world from embedded systems. So all these kind of attacks that were invented and more or less have countermeasures nowadays uh, on smart cards are still applicable to embedded systems. Um, the control of your target, it's, it's, it's a different target, but the basics apply as well. Um, tomorrow there will be a talk by a colleague of mine who's going to be going more in depth on how this works on embedded uh, CPUs. When I say side channel analysis, you can break a target. Um, I'm going to be talking about the DES algorithm later. We're going to break that now. You know that the DES has been cryptographically broken as well, but that's a different way of breaking things. Here we're going to break the implementation security. So I could use the same tricks to break AES. Well, I'm actually breaking the implementation of AES. So I'm not doing something cryptographically uh, new here. Just to go into a few of the attack channels that you can think of, um, one early one that people have been looking at is uh, timing. So let's say you have a process and it takes a certain amount of time. 
And depending on what's going on in the inside of the algorithm, it takes 20 milliseconds or 30 milliseconds. Now, when you have this kind of knowledge, then you know just by measuring the time whether it's done process A or process B. And if this depends on some kind of secret being processed in your chip, then you've recovered the secret. I'll show um, in one of the next slides a cool example on that. Um, power consumption is one of the major, let's say, uh, side channels that we're uh, going to be looking at. Um, you can imagine that each device uses power, but when you really start to measuring this precisely, you can see that this power actually relates to what the device is doing. So this relationship, if once you start to understand it, you can just from the power usage um, say something about what it's been doing. Same kind of idea with electromagnetic radiation. Uh, every device that uses power is going to send out signals as well, and we can analyze those as well. I'll have a demo on that uh, in a sec. Um, light is another um, attack channel. Actually, um, until a couple of months ago, I thought that this would only be an active channel, like you can fire lasers at, at something and it will change it. But then I read uh, something about picosecond analysis of light as well. And apparently a chip is actually also sending out light. It's like a few photons every 10,000 switches of a transistor, but you can, with certain equipment, you can actually see uh, a chip working. Now, we don't have the equipment for that, unfortunately, in our lab, um, but it sounds pretty cool. Now, sound. Um, I personally never have heard a chip make any sound yet, but um, sound is in, in principle, it's also a side channel. Um, this has been shown also uh, a couple years ago by some guys who were just recording the sounds of key presses, and each key actually has its own distinct fingerprint in terms of the sound it makes, it's the clicking sound. So just by measuring that for long enough, you can, by listening into somebody's keyboard, you can um, reconstruct what he's been typing. Now we're going to be mostly looking at power and EM here. I have one example on time. Um, so that's what I just said. So what kind of hardware do you need for this? Um, well, first of all, it's nice to be able to actually measure the power. So you need some kind of oscilloscope. Uh, preferably be a, a digital one. Um, I need some kind of PC to acquire the signal. Now, depending on your target, this can be just an off-the-shelf eBay scope going up to sort of the scope that you see on the picture, which is um, the price of a small car, which is the kind of stuff that we use in the lab. Because when you go to the really high end targets, you need to have some very precise measurements. But the older smart cards are really easily breakable by any let's say, standard, easy uh, scope. Well, you need a probe. Um, and depending on what channel you're measuring, you either need uh, a small resistor in the power supply to the smart card, and you can measure the voltage drop over this resistor, and this tells you how much power it's using. Um, or if you're going to measure electromagnetic fields, you can put a coil in the field and just measure um, the signals that are coming from there. And obviously, you need to somehow control your targets. So you need to have either a smart card reader or a contactless smart key card reader. And on an embedded system, the interfaces are not so well defined as on a smart card. So you sometimes need to run your own code in the system um, and uh, be able to.